Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about Hungarian true crime cases. My name is Tima and yes, I cut my hair at home with some blunt scissors based on a Brad Mondo tutorial. I really should have skipped the bangs. It's not good for me. But what do you guys think? Let me know. <laughs> Today is another episode in my communist crime series, it has been a while and um, before we start I just wanted to bring your attention to something. My sources are always in the description box and I always make sure to credit the people who do the research for this kind of cases and it makes my job so much easier. A lot of the times I have to go in on the Wayback Machine and piece together all of the articles that came out in chronological order and it's not easy. But there is a blog um, from a Hungarian blogger called Dulai Peter who um, researches uh, communist crime stories in particular and I use his sources a lot of the time. So the credit is definitely not for me. Other than that, of course, remember to stay tuned for the Hungarian word at the end of the video. Now let's get started. Today's case takes place in the 80s in countryside Hungary. There was a family of five, the Potrovsky family, in the town of Lurinci. It consisted of the 35-year-old father, Potrovsky Jozef, his wife, Potrovsky Ne, or Mrs. Potrovsky, and their three children, Zoltan, he was the oldest son, and the eight-year-old twin brothers named Peter and Tomasz. Unfortunately, a huge tragedy hit this family that really tore them apart and ruined everything for them. In 1987, Zoltan, the oldest son, died in a tragic accident. He drowned in a swimming pool in Leányfalu, which is just next to my town. I used to go to that swimming pool every single summer when I was young. That was the only place where we could really go swim or bathe. So, of course, this kind of tragedy always makes everything very hard for a family, and it was no different for them. By 1988, Mrs. Potrovsky actually wanted a divorce, because Jozef, her husband, didn't really provide for her and for the twins. He was an alcoholic and he was emotionally unavailable. He just wasn't a good husband all around. Now, he wasn't described as abusive. He actually avoided confrontation with his wife at all costs. If an argument came up, he would just leave the house and go out for a ride instead. Now, fast forward in time to the 17th of December 1988, when Jozef was let out of prison. Yeah, prison because he spent there a few months for fraud and some other minor charges. Now, during his time in prison, he heard that his wife has actually initiated a divorce and that she wanted to take the children. This devastated him, of course. He had already lost his other son and now his family is falling apart. But why would a woman want to stay in a marriage with a man who goes to prison for fraud? Like, he was just not a decent man and I don't know why he thought that he deserved decent things to happen to him. He actually talked to his mother-in-law about how he thought that only the death of his entire remaining family would bring him salvation. And I guess the mother-in-law didn't do anything about it. In Hungary, Christmas is on the 24th of December, so we consider Christmas Eve as the actual holiday and then the 25th and the 26th are just the days when you have to visit your extended family and eat leftovers. The family is always together on the 24th. That's when we give presents to each other and most families decorate the Christmas tree that day. So we don't decorate it in advance like I see so many people do in America that the Christmas tree is up since November. That's so weird. And besides, it's not Santa who brings the gifts, it's baby Jesus. 
but that's just besides the story i just wanted to let you guys know this small trivia about hungary anyway on the 23rd of december he was home alone with the twins because mrs potrovsky was at work until 6 pm now the boys were also at home playing all day long because Christmas holiday had started and there was no school. So they spent the day anticipating Christmas, they were excited and Jozef heard the twins arguing about which parent they were going to choose after the divorce, who they would like to spend the upcoming Christmases and other holidays with. And this was the last draft for Jozef. This was the ultimate confirmation that his family had fallen apart, that now his remaining children had to choose between parents. And that was when he decided to go through with the murder that he had fantasized about for a while. He made a plan that he would give sedatives to the boys and then while they were asleep, he would strangle them and then he would later strangle his wife as well and in the end he would kill himself by either hanging or overdosing. However, as he was planning this murder, thought about all the ways, he figured that he wanted to cause more pain to that poor woman already and that he wanted to take revenge on her. That he would tie her up and then show her the dead bodies of her twin sons to give her the ultimate revenge and torture that a woman can have, a mother can have. And he really thought about every aspect of this murder and he knew no mercy. And he went through with the murder, though not everything went according to plan. That same day, while Mrs. Potrovsky was still not home from work, the twins were watching TV and Jozef gave them a cup of coke each, in which he dissolved eight pills of sadoxin, which is a prescription sedative. Now that's a lot and I'm not sure if that would have been a fatal dose for eight-year-old children. But by 5 p.m. both boys really started feeling the effects of the sedative and they fell asleep. So Jozef checked which boy was in a deeper slumber so he would start with the other one and in this case Peter was more asleep so he started with Tamás. According to his story Jozef started strangling Tamás with a pillow and then also with his hands over his neck and when he thought that Tamás had died he grabbed him by the neck and brought him down to the garage and put him in the car while still holding him by the neck. And then when Jozef realized that Tomasz hadn't died, he was still moaning and semi-conscious, this monster hit him in the head with this bicycle stirring wheel and then continued strangling him with a piece of cable or cord and a scarf. And then to make things sure, he bludgeoned him in the head with an axe, with both the edge and the butt of the axe, until he was sure that Tamás had died. And then there was the other twin. So he went upstairs. And because he figured that strangulation is in such a surefire way, strangulation isn't as easy as it seems in movies, it goes on for several minutes and even with a kid you have to exert a great force. I mean, I, I don't know, but I, I guess I heard. Um, he decided to go another way and he somehow managed to electrocute with 220 volt this tiny little boy and then he brought him down to the garage and put him in the car and then he bludgeoned him in the head with the axe at least 10 times. Just to talk about the method of the murder, killing someone, a human, is so fragile, especially children. It could have been so much easier and yet he collected the most brutal and gruesome ways to murder someone and applied all of them, used all of these 
ways to murder someone on these fragile children like why did he go so much out of his way i i don't i don't understand I, like, you know what i mean like he made it so much more complicated than it was really necessary then he undressed the bodies of the boys and hid the clothes to later make it look like they were not home and in the end he bathed himself and washed off the blood and this whole murder took about one hour because if you remember i said that mrs potrovsky's shift was going to end at six so she got home not much later than that when she asked where the boys are Jozef lied that their grandma came to pick them up where they were going to spend the night so they could be together this whole night they had dinner and then mrs podrovsky went to bed because she was very tired and Jozef planned on killing his wife that night but he didn't end up going through with it because during dinner he had some wine that made him drowsy and sleepy and he just fell asleep before he had the chance to kill her so the next morning he woke up early and decided oh shit i actually wanted to kill my wife and he started tying her to the bed by the feet and the hands to which mrs potrovsky woke up and was baffled to see that her husband was trying to tie her to the bed she yelled at him and told him that if he doesn't stop he was going to kick his teeth out so he did he stopped and he tried to just joke it away said oh it was just a christmas prank and i guess she didn't think too much of it and didn't suspect anything just yet so they woke up and started their christmas preparations they decorated the Christmas tree and then went to the cemetery to visit their dead son's Zoltan's grave. After this, she wanted to go to the grandma to pick up her two sons, to which Jozef became agitated and started behaving suspiciously. And this is the part of the story when just a huge chunk is missing. We don't know what happened after this. We know that he started behaving suspiciously and agitated at the mention of the grandma because he knew that the kids were not there. And I don't know when, but somehow they ended up at the police station where he made a full confession to the murder of his two children. Whatever happened in between, I have no idea. But the investigation started, the police went to check out the home and they found all of the evidence, the bodies, the murder weapon and every other trace of evidence that collaborated with his confession. And the forensic medic was able to confirm that both boys died of blunt force trauma to the head and brain damage and shock. But it wasn't neither confirmed nor debunked that Peter was really electrocuted. There was no signs of that on the body. And it also cannot be said for sure if Tomasz was taken to the garage by the neck like there was no marks of that on his neck which i find it weird how a forensic medic wasn't able to prove this piece in the story and if it was a lie then why did Jozef lie about this like why did he purposefully make his story worse than it could have been i don't know maybe there was just no way to show this in forensic science i'm not sure but either way, his trial started and he was soon given his sentence. He was sentenced in 1989, which if you know anything about history, you know was a very remarkable year in Eastern and Central Europe. That was when the Iron Curtain fell. He initially got the death sentence, but in the November of 1989, after the system changed from communism to democracy, it was reduced to life in prison. The reason why his death sentence was reduced to a life sentence was because in democracy it is unconstitutional 
to give the death penalty. And I wish I could say that he is still rotting in prison somewhere, but he's not, because in the 90s, a life sentence meant 25 years. It has been changed in recent years, but because he was sentenced then, the law of that era still stands for him. And if that wasn't enough that we went from the death penalty to life in prison to 25 years, he didn't even serve full term because he was granted parole in 2009. It was on the 2nd of December 2009 that this monster who killed his own two children and attempted to kill his wife is now roaming the streets as a free man. His father even got him a job in an aluminum foundry. And as much as I know, he hasn't been in legal trouble ever since. But during his years in prison, he got visitors and packages and letters every month as if he deserved it. In an interview sometime after the murder, his wife said that had she not woken up to him trying to kill her in the morning, of course he would have killed her, but it probably would have been better for her. Like imagine the depression, like honestly don't even imagine because even the thought of it makes me want to fucking cry. And then his mother also said in an interview that sometimes she dusts off the toys of the twins and that their Christmas presents are still on the top of the cupboard unopened. It was going to be two identical luggages filled with toys like matchbox cars and other cool toys that I'm sure they would have loved. But they were never placed under the Christmas tree. I cannot even wrap my head around this case. Like, how did we go from the death penalty to less than 20 years in prison and then walking free? How, how could he do this incredibly, terribly brutal murder on his own two children who did nothing wrong? And for what? Because his wife wanted to divorce? Well, of course he was an asshole. He was a subhuman. He was below anything that I can imagine. Honestly, 25 death sentences wouldn't have been enough for him. I guess my opinion is pretty straightforward on this story. I don't need to elaborate on it any further. Today's Hungarian word of the case is going to be for asshole, because I just don't know a better word to describe this man. It's shagfej, shagfej. Shag fei. It actually means ass head, as if your head is an ass, but that's just how we describe it. And my engagement question for you today is what kind of punishment would you give this man? What would be just for what he had done? Let us know down in the comment section as well as your other opinions. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, I mean like you should. And thank you so much for watching, I see you next time, bye! And Jozef planned on killing her that night, but he didn't go through with it because during dinner... Ah, oh, fuck, why does this always happen?